Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be looking at how to style the prev and next pagination links that we added to each pagination page in the previous tutorial. All right, so to do that, we're going to go to the pagination link styling post right here, and I'm just going to zoom in. All right, so we are going to be looking at how to add this pagination class right here. Then we're going to take a look at adding the left and right arrow icons. And we're going to take a look at how to download the icons, updating the icons directory, displaying the icons, and then styling the icons. And then we're going to take a look at how to optimize the icons. All right, so like I said, we're going to begin the process of styling the prev and next pagination links that we added to each of the pagination pages in the previous tutorial. And to implement the styling, we're going to be adding the following CSS classes. So that pagination class, our left arrow class, and the right arrow class to the index post layout component. And the pagination class will be used to properly space out the prev and next pagination links. And the left and right arrow classes will be used to add some styling to the left arrow and right arrow icons, which we'll be adding using the global VP icon component, which is provided by the VPress plugin SVG icons. So if we take a look at the local development server over here, if we go to all posts, then if we go down here, we can see that we have our next pagination link right here. And then on the, if we go to the next page, you can see that we have the prev and we have the next there. And you can see how this styling, and I'll zoom in a bit here, and you can see how this styling isn't that great. So that pagination class is going to space it out, and then we're going to use the, we're going to add the left and right arrow icons, and then we're going to add some styling for them as well. All right. Now, when adding the styling updates, you want to be sure to add each block of code below one at a time to your project, then view the changes in the browser to get a better understanding of what each block is responsible for. And you can also view all this code in this tutorial by going to the tutorial 20 branch of the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. So you can come right here and you can get all of the code that we're using in this tutorial. All right, so let's take a look at the pagination class. So we're going to start by adding the pagination class to the div tag that is wrapping both of the router link components in the index.post.view file. So over here, I have the index.post.view file, and down here is where I'm running the local development server. So I'm just going to close that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the pagination class to the div tag that is wrapping both of the router link components. So that would be this div tag right here right up here that's wrapping both of these router link components so what we're going to do is we're just going to say class and then we're going to just say pagination and we'll format this file and save it so we've added the pagination class so like you can see down here we've added the pagination class to that div tag that's wrapping both of the router link components and then we're going to add this styling down here so if we come down here to the style tag, we're going to add these styles. So let me just copy this and then I'm going to just paste this in. So format that, save it. So these, this is the styling that we're going to be adding right here. Down here we have a description of the styling. So right here we have up here we have the lang equal to stylus. So lang equal stylus is used to specify which preprocessor we want to use in the component, which in our case is stylus, which is the default preprocessor used by ViewPress. And then the scope right here, so scoped is used to only apply these styles to the current component, i.e. the index post layout component. And we're scoping these styles since they currently only apply to the index post layout component. All right, we only want these styles to apply to this component in the website. All right, and then down here we have our pagination class, and then we have this display flex right here. So display flex defines a flex container for all of the direct children of the div tag with a class of pagination. All right, so that's gonna make a flex tag, or that's gonna make a flex container for all of the direct children there of this div tag, the class of pagination. So that would be this div tag right there and that div tag right there. All right, and then we're gonna use this justify content space between. So this evenly spaces out the flex items along the main axis of the flex container 
where the first item is flush with the start of the flex container. All right, so that would be our previous link there is gonna sit along the beginning of the flex container. And the last item is flush with the end of the flex container. So that would be the next link. That's gonna be flush with the end of our flex container there. And here the main axis of the flex container is gonna be the horizontal axis. And the flex items are the direct children of the div tag with a class of pagination, i.e. the div tags that are wrapping the router link components, like I said. So right up here, we have this div tag and this div tag. Those are gonna be our flex items. And this div tag with that prev link right there, that's gonna sit along the beginning of the flex container. And then the next tag or that next link right there that is going to be sitting along the end of the flex container since we're using that justify content space between. All right, so the pagination links after we've added this styling right here should now be properly spaced out and you can view the styling updates by navigating to the pagination pages. So if we come over here to the first pagination page. You can see that we have our, and let me just make this bigger and I'll inspect the page. So you can see right down here that we have our next link right there and we've added this styling down here so now it has that display of flex that justify content space between that's what's going to push this to the end of our flex container right there and then we also have a padding top of 2rem that we've added as well so right down here we've also added a padding top of 2rem and that's going to add a padding of 2rem to the top of the to the div tag with the class of pagination so that's going to be that padding right there that you see. That's the uh, the two rem padding that we've added as well. All right, and then if we go to the second page, now you can see how our prev tag, our prev link, and our next link are spaced apart. So if we look at these links right here, you can see how when we have that display of flex and that justify content of space between, that's what's going to make that prev link sit flush against the beginning of the flex container and that next link sit flush against the end of our flex container right there. All right, and then we can go to the last page and then you can see how the pre tag sits along the beginning of the flex container right there. All right, so that is the styling for the pagination links. Now, if you have any questions about the Lang attribute, the scoped attribute, flex box, flex box or CSS in general, then you can check out these resources. So we got one on using preprocessors in view we have scoped CSS right here you can take a look at that complete guide to flexbox you can take a look at that uh, basics of flexbox and then we have one specifically for justify content and then there's a resource for CSS in general right there all right so now let's get into the left and right arrow icons so now we're now ready to add the left and right arrow icons to the pagination links so we're going to start by downloading the icons. So to add the left and right arrow icons to the site, we need to first download the icons and to find the icons for your site. The ViewPress plugin SVG icons recommends using icon font right here. So it recommends this website, which you can go to to get the icons from. All right. Now, after searching for the icons and downloading them, you'll be asked to specify a color and a size for the icons. And for the blog, we'll be using a color right here and a size of 200, which is the default size. Now, instead of searching icon font for the left and right arrow icons, you can download them from the tutorial 20 branch of the Code Monkeys blog tutorials repository. And you can also use this browser extension right here, SVG export. So this will allow you to easily download the left and right arrow icons. So you can, to do this, to easily download the left and right arrow icons, you can also install this browser extension right here, SVG export. And after installing the extension, all you need to do is click the extension icon, which will extract all of the SVGs, including their inline styles from the current page. And a new tab will open containing all of the extracted SVGs, which you can then download. All right, so those are some different ways that you can download the icons. All right, so after you've downloaded the icons, then we're going to update the icons directory. So we need to add them to the icons directory, which should now look something like this. So we come over here and if I open up a terminal and if I go into the docs directory and then I want to go into the icons directory. And if we list out the contents in there, you can see that I already have the left arrow 
SVG icon right there and the right arrow SVG icon. So you're going to want to add them to this directory in your project. All right, and then your icons directory should now look something like this with all those social media icons that we added in a previous tutorial and then the left and right arrow icons that we just added. All right, so now let's take a look at how we're going to display the icons. So after adding the left and right arrow icons to the icons directory, the plugin will automatically load the icons and provides the global VP icon component. Now to use the VP icon component, we need to pass a name attribute to it, where the value is the name of the SVG file we want to use. And here the value for the name attribute will be left arrow for the pre pagination link and right arrow for the next pagination link. All right, so we're getting that from right here. We have it as left arrow. That's the, the name that we're going to use for the pre pagination link. And then right arrow right here, that's the name that we're going to use for the next pagination link. All right, so let me just close out that terminal. Now, we're going to be adding the VP icon components inside of their corresponding router link components. So the index post view file should now look something like this. So if we come down here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add this VP icon right here. So if I just copy this and let me just paste this right here. And then let me just copy this code right here for the next one. And I will paste that and then I will format this file, save it. All right. So, you can see right here that we have our VP icon component right here that we've added. And then we've added that name attribute right there. And we've given it the left arrow right there. And that's for the prev pagination link. And then down here, we've added our VP icon component and we've given it the name attribute right there. And we've assigned it to right arrow. So that's going to use our right arrow icon that we've just added to the project. And to view the left and right arrow icons, we want to navigate to the pagination pages. So if we come over here and let's start from the first pagination page. So you can see down here, if I make this a little bit bigger, you can see right down here that we have our right arrow right there to the right of the next pagination link. And you can see right there, that's where it is in the HTML over here. right down there and then inside of there is where that svg is that is the right arrow icon and then if we go to the next page you can see that we have our prev link with that left arrow icon to the left of the prev pagination link and we also have that right arrow icon to the right of that next pagination link so you can see right there's the svg for the next one and then if we come up here if we go down here you can see there's the svg for the left arrow icon. And then if we go to the third page, you can see that we have our pre pagination link with that arrow to with our left arrow to that left of the pre pagination link right there. All right. So that is displaying the icons right there. So notice how the left arrow icon is being displayed to the left of the pre pagination text and how the right arrow icon is being displayed to the right of the next pagination text. So if you come over here, you can see how we have the prev right here. That's been this left arrow icon is being displayed to the left of the prev pagination link right there. So that is going to to allow that left arrow icon to be to the left of the prev text right there. And then we have the right arrow icon to the right of that next text right there, which is going to display it to the right of the next pagination link right there. All right, so this is just going to ensure that the arrows in the text look correct when being displayed. All right, so now let's get into styling the icon. So we're now going to add some styling to the left and right arrow icons. And the index post view file is going to look like this after adding the styling. So if you come down here, you can see we're going to add these classes right here, that left arrow class and that right arrow class. So if I come over here, and I'll just type in class and then we'll set that equal to left arrow. We'll save that. And then if we come down here and if we add in class and then we just want to set that equal to right arrow. 
and then we will save that. And then if we come down here, this is where we're going to be adding the styling. So let's go down to the styling and this, these are the styles that we're going to add. So I'll just copy these and I'll just paste these in. All right. And then we will save this file. All right. So we have a padding right of 0 0.25 rem. So this adds a padding of 0 0.25 rem to the right of the VP icon component with a class of left arrow. So that's going to be right up here on that preview pagination link right there. Now that it's this VP icon component is going to have that class of left arrow. So it's going to get a padding of 0 0.25 rem to the right of the VP icon component. So that's right there, that padding right. And then we have that padding left of 0 0.25 rem. And that's down here. And this adds a padding of 0 0.25 rem to the left of the VP icon component with a class of right arrow. So that's this right up here. This is the VP icon component with the class of right arrow. And this is the right arrow icon that is being displayed to the right of that next text right there. So that's going to get a padding left of 0 0.25 rem. And to view the styling updates to the left and right arrow icons, we can go back to our pagination pages. So let's go to our first page right here, and we'll just make this a little bit bigger. And you can see now how the right arrow icon right here, it's a little, it has a little bit of padding right there, so it's not right up against that next text right there. So if we inspect right there, you can see how we're going to have that padding left. So if we take that off, you can see how it's just it gives it a little bit more, a little bit more space there for it. And then if we go to the second page and if we take a look at the previous one, you can see again how we now we have that padding right. So if we take it away, you can see how it just pushes it right up against the left arrow icon. All right. So that's what that styling is doing for us. We have it right there again on that next pagination link and then on the brief pagination link on the third page. All right. So that is the styling that we're going to be adding to the left and right arrow icons. And then if you have any questions about the CSS discussed above, then you can check out this general resource on CSS, which will go over padding in more detail. All right, so now let's talk about optimizing the icons. So when downloading the left and right arrow icons from icon font, the icons are going to have a lot of redundant and useless information. And we can use a command line interface CLI command provided by ViewPress plugin SVG icons to optimize the icons. All right, so just a quick note about the icons already optimized. So if you downloaded the left and right arrow icons from the repository or by using the SVG export browser extension, then the icons should already be optimized and you shouldn't have to run the CLI command. All right. So here's the CLI command you can run to optimize the icon. So it's going to be ViewPress, SVGO, and then this docs dir right here, where docs dir is the docs directory for your project, which in our case is docs. And we added this CLI command to the scripts object in the package.json file in the previous post. So you can take a look at this post right here where we talk about the CLI command in more detail. All right. So and if we come over here to the package.json file, we go down here to the scripts, you can see how we've added this script right here, the viewpress svgo docs right there, that CLI command, where docs is the docs directory for our project. And then we're just able to run it with that svgo script right there. And this is how we're going to run it. So if we just open up a terminal, and then if I just run the yarn SVGO, this is then going to optimize the SVGs and the SVGs in this project have already been optimized. All right. So after running that, your icons should be optimized and you can also run using NPM run SVGO if you're using NPM and this is how you do it with yarn. And if you have any questions about how the plugin implements the CLI command or about the plugin in general, then you can check out this guide right here on from the ViewPress plugin SVG icons repository. And 
You can also check out SVGO, which is the optimization tool being used by the plugin to optimize the icons if you're interested in learning more about that. All right, so in this tutorial, we went over adding the pagination class to our index.post.view file, which spaced out that prev and next pagination link. And then we went over the left and right arrow icons. So we went over how to download the icons, different ways to do that. We went over updating the icons directory by adding the left arrow and the right arrow icons to our icons directory. And then we went over how to display the icons, so how to update the index.post.view file. And then we looked at how to style the icons. So our left arrow and right arrow classes that we added and the styling for that. And then we went over how to optimize the icons using the CLI command provided by the ViewPress plugin SVG icons. All right, so in the next tutorial, we're going to continue the styling of the index post layout component by making each post in the list of posts look like a card. So if we take a look here, if we go to all posts, you can see how these posts look like a card right here. So we're going to begin the process of styling our, our posts here on the pagination links or on our pagination pages. All right, so we're going to begin the process of styling them to make them look like cards. All right, so we will see you in the next video.